Hey guys, Zach here with the Spook Report, and today we're going to be talking about Missing 411 Part 3. So in this video series, you're going to start understanding the very strange and odd cases of people disappearing throughout North America and South America eventually when we get there. I have tons of content ready to roll out on this, so my goal is to be posting a video every other day, if not every day if I have time. So. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very strange cluster of disappearances that took place in Ontario, Canada, in a place called Timmins back in the 50s and the 60s. They, what by strange is we have a group of highly experienced hunters, outdoorsmen, and women disappearing in a short period of time. We're talking about a 10 year time span, disappearing with zero trace. These people spent decades out in this wilderness. They mastered their craft, they weren't far from safety, but they just vanished without any trace of evidence. It's, it's truly one of the more strange situations in a cluster effect in the fact that almost all of the similarities here have to do with age. It's almost exclusively elder people who just straight up vanish in this location. Now. If you've ever been walking in the woods and you get that creepy feeling that you're being watched or something's not right, go ahead and hit that like button while you're down there. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content. If you love the dark, the mysterious, the unknown, you've got nothing to lose but follow. Help us out. Help us beat the YouTube algorithm as a new content creator. I just love all the support I'm getting. I mean, every day I'm coming in, I got new comments down below. I love responding to each and every one of your comments. If you have a story you want to share with me, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Or you just want to talk what you think about what's going on. Anyway, so let's get into these disappearances. I'm going to name these out in chronological order, and we're just going to try to get through them as quickly as possible. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Back in 1959, October 29th, two men disappeared in central Ontario in the township of Timmins. Both of these men were experienced hunters and outdoors men who had decades out in the wilderness and in particular this location. Now, during the winter time, this location is pretty uh, packed with snow. So a lot of the hunting trails, no one would even bother going down because it would just be absolutely crazy. At the same time, bears are hibernating and most of the time these people would just sit by their car and they would be able to get their, their hunting game. This particular location in central Ontario is well known for an abundance of hunting and absolutely amazing wildlife. So for hunters, it's a paradise essentially. So the first man, Merrill Newcomb, owned this hunting lodge. He, he was age 50 years old, relatively young to be honest with you. And the second man was George Weber, or Weber, sorry, age 63. Now, Mr. Weber had been involved in a train accident back in 1941 that left one of his legs very uh, immobile, so he was very limited in his capacity to walk and just basically get around. So on this particular day, uh, both Merrill and George were out hunting not far from the lodge. They had taken a vehicle just down the road a couple hundred meters where they would just sit there and wait and they would hunt from the truck. Both of these men vanished without a trace. They never found their weapons, they never found any clothing, human remains, or even a sign of their disappearance. They found no trails. This kicked off one of the largest searches in this region that it had ever been conducted. Military, police, locals, everyone was looking for them. To date, almost 50 years later in like five searches, they have never found a single trace of these men, period. Which is really strange because both of them had decades of experience, both of them were trained, and the area was relatively small. It's not like they could have gone out very far because of how packed the snow is. They stick to the roads. Most people understand that and they don't bother going any further because they didn't need to. The second really weird thing is, is that I can understand one person going missing, but to have two people go missing and have no sign of it is extremely rare. And it's, it's just one of the war, we, more strange cases here. Now, these two alone you might be able to write off, but the fact that there are several other disappearances in the same area with the same conclusions, it's a very strange, and we just have to add this all together. That's, that's the goal of these videos, is to puzzle together 
a series of very strange disappearances that happen to occur in clusters with various uh, similarities, if you will. So now we'll go into the second disappearance, technically the third, you know, because we just did two, but here's the third disappearance in the same area. About a year later, in October in 1960, a woman by the name Elizabeth Kantz disappeared not too far away from t the township of Timmins as well. She was on a hunt she was in a hunting party with a large group of people. They happened to be out in the wilderness hunting and as everybody was walking towards one of their hunting camps, she was kind of towards the rear of the line. You know, everybody was looking at each other, kind of looking over their shoulders, looking around, and at some point in time, someone looked over the shoulder and noticed Miss Kantz was no longer with the group. They immediately stopped and started backtracking and looking for her, and after a little while, they determined like she was missing, and this caused another large search to break out, and it was determined that she had just vanished, essentially. They found no signs of her whatsoever, and again, almost 40 years later, there has been no evidence of her weapon, any of her gear, her body, anything being found. Another strange disappearance in the same area. Now, for me, what brought the similarities here is, is that in all three cases we've mentioned so far, they disappeared in October, within a year of each other, in the same location, and all of them seem to be elderly. Um, it's almost as if you know, something is picking off the elderly because they're easier targets or something. I don't know. That's my opinion. But, you know, unfortunately, there's still seven more cases to go in the same area with very similar details. So we'll go on to the next one now. Vatol Vashan disappeared in 1972. He was near the township of Timmins as well. He was last reported seen near a hunting camp, leaving it and going out not too far to a, a hunting spot that was well known by people. He was never seen again and there's not much information on this case other than the fact that they carried out another large extensive search in this one little area where there's been a cluster of disappearances and they never found a single sign of him. His weapon was never recovered, gear, etc. Just vanish like the others it's really strange and there's going to be even more cases just like this unfortunately back on october 25th 1980 in that same location that general area of central ontario timmins township another man by the name foster benson disappeared at the age of 64 he was last seen walking down a logging road to a hunting ground that was well known by everybody. He was actually spotted by another hunter who remembered the encounter. He saw that the man was walking down the road with a backpack full of gear, a 30 6 rifle on his back, and that was the last time he would ever be seen. There was a very large search once again for Mr. Foster. Um, he had, again, decades of experience in hunting. And at this point, it was kind of a well-known thing that, you know, hunters go dis- they disappear in this area. So, you know, be careful, you know, keep your eye out. They had that knowledge that, you know, apparently this area is pretty dangerous in the sense that people get lost or disappear. Now, a massive search was carried out for uh, Mr. Foster and they found nothing, no sign of him. And keep in mind, this particular location, there are a lot of hunters in this one little spot, so they would have been tripping on each other, essentially. So it was very strange. And one of the investigators working the case noted that another person has disappeared in this small cluster area, and we have no idea why. But keep in mind, this one was almost 20 years after the first disappearances that we have on record in this area. We don't know if there were more disappearances before 1959 because there wasn't really a log kept. For all we know, people were disappearing in this area for a long time. But here we have another case of an elderly man or woman who was in their 60s or 50s hunting armed with a weapon and had decades of experience in this category disappearing without a trace never being found again no sign nothing in a small area and in particular in october uh, it, it's just so strange when you take all of these similarities and you put them together because there is no other missing person cases in this area that don't you know 
show up, if you will. I'm sorry. When you look at a list, they all are elderly people who disappear in October, roughly. There's no other missing person cases during the other times of the year. It's it's a strange situation. It's like exclusively in this time belt. And uh, it, we'll go on to the next one. Back on October 27th, 1987, a man by the name uh, John Clifford disappeared in the same exact location as Mr. Foster. He was a 65 year old man, again, decades of experience hunting and exploring. He was just an extremely well known outdoorsman for his intellect and his ability to just survive. He disappeared in the same exact location as Foster under very similar circumstances, essentially. Never found his weapon, never found his gear. He just straight up vanished in that same location and after several searches they were never able to recover anything. Just another strange story in this small little area and I still have more to tell you. So for our last story we're going to talk about, we're going to be talking about Dustin Rhodes who was an 84 year old man back in 1991 disappeared. Uh, from his cabin. Uh, he basically actually shared this cabin with another person. It was split into two like homes if you will. A younger man with this older man who was in his 80s and you know the younger man would check on him quite often because he's an elderly gentleman to see if he needed anything and when one day when he went back to check on him Dustin was not there. He was gone and there was no sign. So because of his age immediately the young man contacted the authorities, there was a search, and they found nothing. Due to his age, he was not capable of getting very far, he had mobility issues, and they found no signs of him in the immediate area. There was no tire marks that he had left, his vehicle was still there, and there was just no footprints in the snow walking away from the cabin. One of the very strange things about this case is, is that they looked for him uh, several months after when the snow had melted and basically brought in canine dogs to search for, you know, a, a corpse essentially. The dog picked up nothing. It was almost as if he also vanished. Now, um, further researching into this, there was five other disappearances and they all occurred in July. So it was almost as if in July and in October is when these disappearances occur in Timmins uh, Central Ontario. Uh, I have not gone beyond the 60s through the 90s, but it's just a very interesting cluster of disappearances that had occurred in that area affecting people in their elderly age, 50s to 60s. I would say mid-age personally, but you know how it is. So we take all these cases and we look back at the details of it. All these people were in their 60s and 50s. They were all experienced outdoorsmen, hunters, and almost all of them were armed with weapons. Not an easy target um, by any means, but all of them disappeared without a trace. In all of these cases, we did not have a single uh, person's remains ever found, um, nor any evidence of them being found. So right away, that's very strange because normally, especially with a, a missing persons case, we're talking over the span of 50 years of cases. Someone will find something eventually. They'll find a rifle up against a tree. They'll find a backpack out in the woods, an ID, you know, in a tattered bag or pair of pants. Something comes up. But to have all these missing person cases clustered in a small area with little to no uh, evidence of anything just vanishing, it's very strange. And it makes you wonder, what is happening to these people? Now, I, I know it's easy to... to just look at these names as like data. Now I have to remind myself personally that these people had loved ones, families. These, these, it was you know. Imagine if one of your family members just disappeared in a cluster of disappearances. It's deeply personal and sad, and I'm really, it's really unfortunate. But I would love to get to the bottom of why these people are disappearing without any sign. So for me personally, um, I think there's something more going. There, there's a disappearance and I don't even think it's human activity personally because even when you have man hurting another man etc there's evidence always left behind it, it, it's too clumsy if you will it's very rare that you don't find a murder victim etc now these people just straight up disappeared 
leaves you speculating what would cause that. To me, it, it's almost supernatural or a creature or something. It's almost as if they're walking into portals or something and just disappearing. There's no sign of them. It's truly strange. What do you guys think is going on in this case? I'd love to know what you think is going on. And as I go out through more of these videos, you're going to start seeing more similarities and you're going to fall in love in the missing in the missing 411 series. It's it's something I've been studying now for like two years, and the more I read, the more I get addicted to it, because I want to know what's happening to these people. It's truly strange. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoy this type of content, hit that like button, subscribe, help support me out. I'm a new content creator. I'm going to work on getting these videos out as quickly as I can. Unfortunately, I am a disabled veteran, and I have to work, so I, I have to put this in on the side of everything else going on in my life, but I'm going to do my best to continue to get this stuff out to you guys. Thank you again. I hope you all have a great day, and don't forget to let me know what you think's going on, because I'd love to share some of these ideas in my next video. Take care, guys.